and welcome to the Home and Finance Show. This show is designed to provide you with credible and current information about buying, selling, renovating, refinancing, building your home and your credit. I'm Kelly Vaughn, and um, today I'm playing host to the host, to the co-host of the Home and Finance Show. And before I uh, introduce her to you, who you already know, but before I introduce you to her, when I think of this person, um, the word that comes to mind is servant. And oftentimes when we think of a servant, we think of a person who uh, serves at the homeless shelter or the person who serves in their church. Well, this woman to my left is a servant serving through her profession. She wants to see people achieve the ultimate, the American dream, and you know what that is, home ownership. She's here with us on the set of her own show. It's Janet, Janice Bradley. Hello, Janice, welcome to your own show. <laughs> Good morning, Kelly, and thank you so much. Yes, and welcome to the Home and Finance Show. <laughs> um, wow, you wear so many hats, and we're gonna talk about your career as a whole, but the first question I had for you, though, um, you're obviously a broker, owner of JB Real Estate Consultants, but you're on a mission. Tell us about that mission. Tell you about the mission. Well, okay, that is a very, very good question. And I, I guess I would have to go back and how I finally, when I first got into real estate, to actually say I was on a mission. Because um, in the beginning, quite frankly, I had another job, 15, I was working at Indiana Bell for 15 years. So no one would have ever thought that my head wasn't shaped like a bell. You know, I thought I'd be there forever. So that's really the big, kind of like the beginning. I, I got hired at Indiana Bell right after I graduated from high school. And I just happened to actually meet a person who was working there for a short period of time, and she was a realtor. And I don't know what happened. You know, suddenly my head wasn't shaped like a bell anymore, <laughs> and I just said, you know, uh, that it just sounded terribly in intriguing. It just really did. And um, um, it just was something I knew that I wanted to do. I, most of my background at uh, the telephone company was in sales, so that part didn't really even bother me. So I don't think in the very beginning that there really was uh, necessarily a mission. When I first got into real estate, it was just something I thought I could do. And you know, when I got into real estate, it was in 1980, and we're talking about the rates being 17 and 18. And I knew nothing about what that meant because I had nothing to compare it to. Will you say 17, 18%? Percent, absolutely. Wow. So, um, <laughs> yes. You talk about jumping into the fire. I was, you know, I was in the fire. But again, you know, I had nothing really to compare it to. And um, it was just really a blessing how the Lord just helped me um, just get into it. And actually, it was not really a, a bad year. You just dealt with what was um, given to you. And I just learned the different kind of financing packages. And I think that has always been one of my my greatest um, advantage is the fact that I understood both sides, not just um, real estate, but the financing part. Mm -hmm. I found that as I got into the real estate business that I started um, feeling very, very uh, grateful, actually, just of how the fact of, you know, how the world turns. And I say that simply because of the fact that um, um, my childhood was very, very difficult. And uh, we actually moved around quite a bit. You know, we really never had a house to stay in. It was with relatives, families, or something of this nature. So, you know, I'm telling you, you know, who, who knew at that stage of your life that you were really homeless? Right. So quite frankly, um, that too passed. There's no doubt about that. But after working um, with the telephone company and, you know, after, after obviously I was married and at that time and just was exposed, you know, to a lot of other ways of living. And people, my next door, next door to me, you know, at the next desk, they were buying homes and so on and so forth. And I just said, I can do this too. And so, um, just that very fact of um, being, in a, a, being in a situation to be able to buy a home, my husband and I, uh, quite frankly, uh, when we bought, it was a blended family. We both had been married before. So the fam our ages of our children were just kind of steps 
letter, but we knew we wanted to be in a situation where we didn't have to kind of keep moving. Uh, mainly, I'll just share with you, my husband came from a family of 10, and they kept growing, so they had to keep moving, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, and the same thing with me, like I shared with you, we moved quite a bit, so we both knew we wanted to be stable. We wanted to be in a home that our children could grow up in, and that's exactly, you know, what happened. But what started being the mission is the fact that um, I understood from my background, you know, that I actually owned a home. And mm -hmm. when I started working with um, different individuals, just the situations, hearing what people would say or, or not say, I'm one of those kind of people that, you know, we can have a conversation. I'm hearing what you say, but I also know that there are things that you're not sharing. So initially it started off as I'm selling homes, mm -hmm. I'm doing this to make a living, and then you kind of looked around you and thought, mm -hmm. well, everybody not buying a home. There's, there, what it was the impact. I think it was the impact of, of how they were, when we were buying homes and closing on homes, to know what a difference that, you know, the Lord had blessed me to affect their lives. You know, and so it, it just became more of a humbleness, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Now, a, a part of your mission is, and, and as you have expressed, you know, time and time again on the show, is fulfilling the American dream, but especially for people of color, of African Americans. So, tell us about that journey and why that's so important to you. Well, absolutely. Um, the journey also was my family, you know, my sisters and brothers, and we all you know, I was in a church uh, meeting just talking about home ownership and it dawned on me, yes, from our humble beginnings that every last one of us were home ownership and that was four of us, you know, our children even, you know, owning homes. So that's when you talk about that being a mission, um, because again, what God can do for one, you know, for me, he can do for you. And, and that was the encouragement part that I wanted to have with, uh, that I do have to this day with my customers. Yeah, so um, again, I started off to, with my mission saying, you know, dream maker um, and the ownership of, of, of this, so I've changed that. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's not just the fact that your dream home is the dream of having a home, mm -hmm. you know, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like that better than, you know, your dream home because again, um, our dream home, of course, we know where that is. Mm -hmm. So, but, mm -hmm. but the dream of owning a home and to see, you know, the look on people's face when they actually get their keys, there's nothing like it. There is not like mm -hmm. nothing like it, you know, and that's why you see a lot of pictures with realtors and holding up their keys, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, right. You can't, you can't take, that's something you just can't take away from anybody. And, that, and I would think as part of, of um, what you have to accomplish with working with people is making them see the importance of that because a lot of people just say, I want to rent or they don't get it. They don't understand the value of it or the, the how it builds wealth. And it, there's just, I see a lot of people around me who just don't, don't get that. And, and that's a big part of what you're teaching people, right? Absolutely. But let's just kind of back up. Mm -hmm. So for those that have the uh, accomplish the, the the quote American dream. Mm -hmm. Yes, they get it. It's you know how we can continue to keep it going because again, I, I we just one of the shows that we had. We talked about the uh, home ownership, uh, minority or black home ownership has not really increased in several several years. So for you know for what they say for each one, teach one. You know that's that's kind of the situation that. Um, that I think we should definitely be in because, again, just kind of backing up, yes, we, we want to increase it. You know, you did it, you did it, you know, and mm -hmm. just to keep that, that circle going. Okay, okay. So, um, you are, when people say uh, you're the expert, you're more than qualified, you're almost overqualified. You, your accomplishments, can I talk about some of those things <laughs> that you've accomplished? Obviously the broker and, and owner of JB Real Estate Consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, you've served on a number of boards and committees, Metropolitan Indianapolis Board of Realtors, mm -hmm. Indiana Association of Realtors, National Association of Realtors, Independent Real Estate Brokers Association, Consumer Certified Real Estate Consultant, is what you are, uh, the Indianapolis Insight Neighborhood Housing Community, and of course, co-host of the Home and Finance Show, not just on television here on WHMB TV 40, but on radio for how many years? Actually, it's probably going on 21 years. I don't know how those years pass like that, but yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was wow. the craziest situation, Kelly. It really was how that took place. And, and probably that's definitely one of the, not, it's, it's probably right now, I would say the number one accomplishment and what we're really proud of because Diana and I even talk about the fact that we've been on the show so long that um, it's our legacy. Uh, we mm -hmm. were um, asked to be on the show, I think um, one of uh, Diana's friends, and she was an attorney. And as you know, on 1310 um, AM that they would have the doc medical shows, the doctor mm -hmm. shows, whatever, um, uh, legally speaking. And so one of Diana's friends asked us to come on to talk about real estate and um, lending. And um, we did, and I think the show was probably only in maybe a half, and I have no idea how long. But we came out of there, and I looked at Diana, and I said, we ought to have our own radio show. And she looked at me, and you know, because I come up with ideas, but I expect somebody else to, you know, to take care of it. Yeah, of course. And um, <laughs> Diana can probably get into that a little bit more because she, I think she started she, the, the people involved, um, Paul and and uh, Jim Payton. But she can probably talk about that a little bit more. But that was the inception, quite frankly, is that I, I just said it out of the clear blue sky, and it happened. And let me just kind of share something with you that is the hilarious, okay? The show started off being a half an hour, 30 minutes, okay? Uh -huh. Now we can go for two and a half hours. I know you, I know you 30 do. 30 <laughs> minutes was the show. I have to talk about my friend. Diana Rice Wilkerson would come in with a briefcase, okay? With all this to talk about, you know? And I, I couldn't even get in the door wondering what is she doing? But again, that was just, we were just trying to be prepared and, and what have you. And I've always kind of been able to talk, well, she can too, but you know, just off the, just because we, what we know, you know, what we've been involved in. But that was the fastest, mm -hmm. I mean, half an hour, and then we were blessed to have it, have at least an hour mm -hmm. show. But, um, now that show is live, right? It is live. Uh, so tell me um, the, the kind of feedback you get from, from listeners or perhaps something that a listener has said to you that just really touched the both, both of you or impacted your life by what you're doing on the show. I think the very fact that we are real, okay? When we talk about straight talk, we talk about straight talk. Um, Quite frankly, we pay for the show ourselves, and I say that because of the fact that you know that way we're not told what we can't do, we can't say, and we can't you know we mm -hmm. can't do. But we give them examples. We're really telling them, this is this is the key. The key is you know what the public or the community needs to know what's affecting them, okay, and how and what to do about it. You know, and it's it's a, more of a take action. Uh, we have been in the business. Um, well, right now it would be 42 years for me, you know, actually in March. So there is a lot learned, okay? There's a lot still more to know. And every year isn't the same. Things change, the rates change, um, buyer's market, seller's market, things of this nature. And we just we just keep it real. We, we keep it real. Wow, oh, I love it, I love it. Uh, m more about your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. um, your firm, JB, Real Estate Consultants was awarded the contract for listing of homes in the Riverside community by INHP. That was a huge deal. That was, that, that was. Um, really did appreciate it, um, and we did well. I mean, we did well while they had the homes in, in the, in the, uh, on, the, on the market, yeah. Yeah, because you just don't that. get that for just, you know, <laughs> kind of hanging out and doing your thing. I mean, you have to be above and beyond to even be approached to do something like that. So that's that, awesome. That was, that was a blessing. Yes. Uh, helped open the very first Remax office in Indianapolis. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. That was a, that was a pretty, pretty big. Actually, um, I was co-owner. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Priscilla Russell and I uh, had worked together in the past, and um, she had an opportunity that came up as far as the um, Remax, a um, you know, franchise situation. So she asked me if I wanted to be part of it, in which, um, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, I became part of it, you know, part mm -hmm. owner. So that was a big deal. Because we're talking 1987. So what was the climate That then? was actually, I think, around 1990, I think. Was it 90? Yeah, 90? I, okay. I think so, only because I remember seeing the um, recorder having some kind oh. of information about it. So oh, they did something. Because I, I never Peace remember. I never remember years. I, I okay. really don't. Um, it, was, it was quite exciting. I mean, it was quite, a, uh, quite exciting because when 
we both first started Remix. I started Remix before she did. And the reason is that it's a difference about it. Remix at that particular time when they first came into the city, you know, they only wanted to work with experienced agents, you know. So it wasn't just that anybody could be there. And of course, I had some experience. I started off with Carpenter Realtors and I've been in the business X amount of years. So you were pretty much asked to come. Mm -hmm. So quite frankly, Remax uh, was the, the the um, identity of it pretty much was to teach you how to be in business because you pretty much were in business for yourself, okay, because of the way it was set up. And that's quite frankly how it was set up. Priscilla came a little bit later. And so we did have that um, concept and understanding of, of how to be in business for, for ourselves. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, so wow, I mean, I'm just so impressed with your accomplishments. Um, and um, the fact that you can take all of that and help other people is just tremendous. And uh, I just hope the, the viewers understand that that is really what it's about, is helping them to understand and to learn from you, and, and you're just a phenomenal teacher. It's a ministry. Yeah. It's a, it's oh, a I like ministry. That. I like it, that. it just yeah. really is, Diane, and I both say that. You know, we're pretty passionate. We're pretty passionate about it. Don't even ask me a single question about real estate because then it'll be another 90 minutes or an hour, but <laughs> we're very, very, very passionate about it. Okay. Um, so, what do you think is the secret to your success? Well, um, I probably will have to say that. Uh, is a gift. Mm -hmm. I think it's a gift with some of the um, uh, part of my personality. Um, you know, I'm a giver. I'm compassionate. Mm -hmm. um, I am, am intuitive, uh, and I am in a I'm in a situation. I, I'm in, in situations, and I, maybe it's just because of family, because of my love for family, my own family, that um, I try my best to put myself in my customer's shoes. You know, I say things or do things that, you know, if, if they were my family, you know, so whether it's location, whether it's lifestyle uh, or the lifestyle of the house, the floor plans of the house, things of this nature. I, I just really, I, I have to be true to myself and true, you know, to my maker. I want to talk a little bit about your message to, to viewers about homeownership and making people understand how it creates wealth, what would you say to them? Well, I would say the number one, um, definitely uh, it does create wealth. I mean, there's no if and buts about it. It's like a, it's, uh, it's like a safety, uh, excuse me, like, you, well, what do they call it? A savings account, you know, when you've created wealth that way because of the equity that you're acquiring um, through, throughout your years. Uh, one of the things obviously would be um, a legacy you know, to, to actually pass on. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were using new words now, um, and it's legacy purchase. You know, I like using that word, you know, because I think that makes a difference when you understand legacy. Uh, stability for your family. There's no ifs and buts about it, you know, for your children. I like the fact of having your own door. I like saying that. If anybody knows me, they know how I feel about front doors. Um, act, you know, it's, it's your own thing, you know. You can paint it silver and get silver and gold, whatever you want to do, because it is yours. Um, you know, and when you're renting, you know, if you've done any painting or anything of this nature, you know, you've got to redo it or miss, don't get your deposit back. You know, and it's, it's pride of ownership. It's just pride of ownership. So I hope that answers your, your questions mm -hmm. as far as, you know, what home, home ownership really does mean. Mm -hmm. um, we also talked about a little bit earlier about the fact that there's actually a fight right now. I mean, it's the savings for you as far as um, um, not having to deal with inflation. You know, when you're renting, you know, you have to deal with rent payments going up. Mm. Uh, mortgage payments are fixed. You know, if, if anybody's still on an adjustable rate, get off of them. You know, mm -hmm. if you shouldn't have to in this day and age. But your, your mortgage payment is fixed. The only thing that can change would be homeowner's insurance, you know, or property taxes. So that's, that's a sense of giving us a, a sense of security. Helps build your credit, you know, so just things of this nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to talk a little bit more about your your family mm -hmm. and um, tell us about you mentioned your husband mm -hmm. and and how many kids you have and mm -hmm. and grandkids and mm -hmm. all that and how do you do that with all this and all these committees and awards and how do you keep up with all of that? Well, um, 
everybody's pretty much up there now, so I don't, I'm not as involved as, as much. But actually, mm -hmm. I have been a workaholic all my life, especially with real estate for some reason. You know, it, it, it helps, drives me. But I had the most amazing husband um, who, you know, definitely helped out. Uh, he's deceased now, so, um, but we had uh, 42 years oh, of sorry, marriage. I'm sorry, I did not know that. Yeah, he, uh, wow. uh, deceased. Uh, we, we were married 42 years, and as I said, we had a, a blended family. And uh, because of how the st children are like three and four, two and three ages different, mm -hmm. um, it just made it so great. And we ended up with uh, 12 grandchildren. Uh, four of them are the same age. That's because of, you know, that's the craziest thing. And I remember when they were born, I said, my God, they're going to graduate from high school at the same time. But um, I'm so, so, so blessed with these 12 children. Um, I now have seven great grand. And the, the, the cousins are like sisters and brothers. They have, you know, everybody's goes away to school or mm -hmm. whatever, but when everybody's together during the holidays, they have cousin parties, you know, things of this nature. But um, I have an amazing, amazing family. Wow, wow, and what a blessing. I mean, the business mm -hmm. is great mm -hmm. and all that, but when you're blessed with an amazing, a family and an amazing family, that truly is a blessing. Uh, your most awarding accomplishment was being the first minority woman co-owner of Remax real estate franchise, which you received a Trailblazer Award. Tell us about the award for that. Yes, um, CIRA, which is the Central Indiana Realtors Association, when the organization started about nine years ago, um, we started Trailblazer Luncheons. So it was accomplishments of what whatever your profession, whether it was lending or, or what have you, what you, you have done and you were, you know, awarded for it. So that was that was probably one of the greatest, but I think also the fact that um, I was the first minority director on the Board of Realtors was a, a big, big accomplishment for me. Wow. So that, um, and quite frankly, you've got to put home in finance. We're talking about TV and radio, <laughs> my goodness, you know, so. Yeah. I'm thinking right now, that's going at the very top. <laughs> right, right, there you go. It doesn't get much better than that. And of course, of course, you know, it's easy for me to say I love the business just like you do, so you're absolutely right. So what does Janice Bradley want to accomplish that she hasn't accomplished? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I am not prepared for Do we have enough that. time in the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm winding down. I'm, I'm winding no. down. No, yeah, I don't believe yeah, you. I'm, I'm thinking I don't about, believe you. I'm thinking very much about that. <laughs> yes, it's, my children have been trying to get me to slow down, you know, so. But, um, yeah, I, I have a future. I think what I'd like to get more into consulting. I, I know I have a lot of knowledge. I know I give a lot of knowledge. Um, but I would like to do more consulting. Now, what does that really look level. like when you say, because, you well, know, everybody says, I'm with, a consultant. But yeah, what, consulting, what, 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 well, and that's why I call my name uh, JB Real Estate Consulting, because okay. exactly that's what you're, what you're doing. I'd like to get more into consulting, you know, with, with home buyers and just really somehow, some kind of way, just, you know, either it's reinvent or just, you know, make sure that everybody understands this wealth building. You know, that is, is we aren't not, our, uh, our um, black ownership is not increasing like it should, it's decreasing. So I think the more education that we can get and give, let's just put it that way, I would love, I would really love to do that. I would love to work on, since I'm a senior citizen, with more senior citizens when they're downsizing, although you'd be surprised when these grandchildren come, some senior citizens upgrade, they don't downsize, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, that type of thing. Um, yeah, I, I think with, um, I think that's probably my, because I don't, I can't see myself just not doing anything, mm -hmm. but I do have the desires to to bring in some also some um, income streaming, you know, just bec with the business, you know, with, with the business, so that it's nothing just going dormant. Okay. Now, do you consult with other real estate agents or those who want to be like you? Well, um, that's a good question. Diana keeps telling me that I need to... Um, definitely 
consult with other uh, realtors. But maybe some of that, if I can, if I can go that way, if that can go that way, it would definitely, you know, maybe it would even be a, a school of some type. Because when you're taking those real estate classes, and especially when you're taking those tests, that's not the real thing, you know, at all. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like um, get right straight to it. I would kind of more or less like to teach people how to get, keep the main thing the main thing, you know. And one of the things that I know that um, I'm gifted with is that I don't have an ego. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I sometimes realtors have, you know, they want this power, they want this control, you know, but I manage to keep the main thing, the main thing, and that is to make sure that we're getting your seller and your buyer to closing. So negotiation has probably been one of my best um, assets, you know, that's helped do that. Okay. We, you just set a tremendous example for people in the real estate industry and anybody who watches the show, um, anybody would be impressed, inspired. So what does it take to be like Janice Bradley? Um, meeting people where they are. Hmm. That's kind of deep. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting where they are. Okay. That takes okay. time and experience and maturity. Okay. So that sounds like being a good listener. Absolutely. Yeah. And and again, like you know, um, I didn't make this up. But like I said, you know, you gotta when people were talking, it's not just um, it's not is also what they're not saying. But there's a saying, and I I really screw up sayings. But it was something like um, you know, listening is not um, hearing. Listening is feeling. Mm. So. I've, I've tried to use that as, as my way of doing things or working or okay. listening. Okay, okay. We get me feeling good. I'm inspired <laughs> and I, I hope viewers are too. Um, we appreciate you coming on, sharing your journey, your story, your life, and, and doing that um, and allowing me, man, what an honor that you asked me to even do this. And I'm telling you, people think you just sit up here and do it. And it does take some, some thought and some prep, but I was a little nervous actually because I'm, it's such an awe of you and Diana and what you do. And well, um, let me say before you finish, you know, um, my life wouldn't be half it is if I didn't have the kind of partner and friend that I have with Diana Rice Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as we are different, we are certainly a lot alike and we have the same goals and the mission and the same mindset. And, you know, we're, we're partners in crime. Okay, the dynamic duo, yes. as you've been referred to in your commercial. All right, well, Janice Bradley, um, real estate extraordinaire guru and home of the uh, host of the Home and Finance Show on television and radio. Thanks so much for joining us uh, on your own <laughs> show. I feel <laughs> odd saying that, but thanks for, for allowing us to, um, to see your life, oh. to see who you really are. Thank you for the privilege and thank you TV station, Channel 40. All right, right. And thank you all for uh, watching. I'm Kelly Vaughn, and this has been the Home and Finance Show. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Janice, Hi. and I'm Diana, and we are your co-hosts for the Home and Finance Show. You can catch us every Tuesday from 9 to 9.30 right here on Channel 40, or you can catch us on Saturdays on 1310 AM The Light. Now Janice has a special announcement for you. Seniors, is it time to move because of lifestyle changes? I can help you as your senior real estate specialist. Call me to discuss all the possibilities for you.